Uh, our chair, Steve Bryant, is at another community event, and he will be coming in shortly, we hope. <laughs> so without further ado, we'd like to call this meeting to order. And I was asked to make sure that Colin Chandler's asked to lead us in the pledge. Fabulous job, Colin. <laughs> now we'll need to approve the minutes. May I have a motion for approving the minutes? And a second? Thank you. Um, are there any changes to the agenda before I call for approval of the agenda? Great. Um, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? And a second. Thank you. And I will gladly turn it over to our superintendent now. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Wilson, and our Board of Education. And extend a very special thank you to East Jackson Comprehensive High School for hosting us. Those of you who this might be your first visit to one of our board meetings, thank you for being here. We are very intentional about rotating our board meetings so that our board members have an opportunity to be out in the community. And we always look forward to our May meeting where we have lots of celebrations and we highlight some very dedicated staff members who have um, served Jackson County Schools and um, retirement. So we're going to recognize those people in just a couple of minutes. I want to thank Dr. Morris and especially all of the folks who worked diligently to make sure that you are able to recognize the outstanding servants that you will see in just a few minutes. But uh, one of our great um, benefits of visiting the schools is to be able to see what each school has going on and we got a small taste of what's happening here at East High. There are many outstanding things happening at East High, Lion King being one of them, but Ms. Palmer is going to share with you some East Jackson Comprehensive School uh, comprehensive high school highlights. So Ms. Palmer, who is the assistant principal for instruction, and we are very proud to announce we'll be assuming the role of principal next year, is going to give you a little bit of an overview of the points of pride at East Jackson High School. So Ms. Palmer, I'll turn it over to you. All right. All right. Hello and welcome to East Jackson High School. We're so glad to have you joining us for the Board of Education meeting this evening. Hello and welcome to East Jackson High School. We're so glad to have you joining us for the Board of Education meeting this evening. And we'd like to share with you some highlights of our school year. Of course, we're really excited about the data that shows we're making progress, like our 92 CCRPI score and our 95.6 graduation rate. However, there's a lot more to East Jackson High School than just those hard numbers, and we want to show you a few of those things this evening. So in this video, you will see things like our boys tennis team who made it to state for the first time in history this year. We were able to make the state applause, which has never been happened in school history, so Moving forward, I think it's going to give our team a lot of confidence going into the next region tournament and the next state tournament to keep on going there, keep getting higher in state every year as we progress. You will see information about our Lanier Tech and University of North Georgia dual enrollment programs which are growing. This year, we are proud to announce that EJCHS had 82 students apply for dual enrollment through UNG. Of these 80 students, 46 have already been accepted to UNG for fall 2018. In addition, we have 28 EJCHS students that are currently waiting on their acceptance. For next school year, we're really excited about moving forward with our partnership with Lanier Tech. We have over 43 students taking part in dual enrollment classes, which span from welding to nursing assistance, early childhood, and criminal justice. We're proud to say that over 90% of our students gained admissions to Lanier Tech on their first attempt, and we look forward to expanding our programs above and beyond what we currently have. Way to go, Eagles. So we're giving students the opportunity to not only earn high school credit, but many of them are earning college credit and moving forward with certificates and degrees before they ever leave high school. We also want to highlight our wonderful fine arts program that is growing. 
Our dance program has over 180 kids involved in it, and you'll see some clips from their recent dance recital. Our course program is growing, again, over 180 students in that program, and I believe that you will see a segment of their Lion King performance tonight. Those students have also been invited to perform in Hawaii on December 7th at the Pearl Harbor Memorial. So our kids are not only impacting our immediate community, but we're going to various places throughout the United States to show what East Jackson High School has to offer. We have an Upward Bound program, or where our students are participating in Upward Bound um, this year for the first time. Upward Bound is there to fill in kind of the gaps, and so UGA is one of the colleges that sponsors it, and they love our students. They gave us a ton of slots. We have about 20, 21 kids that are currently involved. The reason I'm kind of skeptical is because we're adding some new ones as I speak, and then we'll have 10 more slots. So the goal here is to have at least 30 kids from our school gearing towards transitioning into their future. Upward Bound has helped influence me by encouraging me to become a better student, giving me opportunities to do tutoring to get my grades up, um, and also go to college tours, which is opening me up to colleges I never knew existed. It's also given me a better view on what I wanted to do with life. They also said that it will be there after I graduate high school and throughout college into my career of choice. And you may also be wondering why I'm wearing this t-shirt and looking pretty unprofessional for this video. But today on our campus, we had our first college signing day where our students, our seniors who have already received their acceptance letters, got to have their pictures made and share with the student body where, where they will be going to school next year. And our faculty has participated as well by wearing t-shirts from the places that we went to college. So I hope you enjoyed this video and get a little taste of what it's like to be at East Jackson High School. Miss Chandler's on the side. I mean, listen to me. Mr. Chandler's gone. <laughs> Miss Palmer's on the sideline there and cheering them on. Thank you very much. Excellent video. Um, we'll be announcing this at graduation, but since we're here, I've already heard back from East Jackson, and I think they should be celebrated. Not counting hope right now, I think your calculation is right at $1.5 million in student scholarships for East Jackson's graduating class of 2018, so that's a shout out as well. So congratulations for the outstanding work happening here. and did a fantastic job, much to celebrate. So thank you for hosting us, and at this time, I'm gonna ask Dr. Selena Blankenship if she'll come forward. She's already ready to go. Um, and we are, this is really a bittersweet opportunity for us. Uh, we've got several folks retiring and several who have served Jackson County Schools for many, many years. So um, we'll take just a few minutes to highlight these retirees and say a few words, and Dr. Blankenship, I'll let you kind of tell them what you'd like for them to do and to receive their gift and certificate and so forth. Absolutely. Well, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to recognize our retirees who have given wonderful service to the Jackson school system. So let me give you a little direction. Um, when I call your name, we'll be uh, recognizing in by schools. So when I call your name, if you will come up, uh, shake each of the board members' hands. Dr. Howard's going to join me over here as well as your um, your principal or supervisor, and then uh, we'll give you a, a gift to, to uh, remember us by and remember your years of service. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll recognize our central office employees. And first up, we have Kathy Anderson, uh, plant services secretary and accounts payable. And this is, uh, I'm sorry, Kathy served Jackson County for 26 years, and this is what Mr. Josh Patton had to say about Kathy. 
It was a pleasure working with Kathy over the past two years. She got to know all of the guys who worked in plant services, and she became like a mother to some of them. She used her accounting background to bring needed financial procedures to plant services and helped make our department better. She was good to work with, and all of us will miss her. We hope she has an enjoyable retirement doing all the things she loves. Ms. Kathy Anderson. Next, we have Ms. Barbara Banks, Payroll Supervisor. Barbara served Jackson County School System for 19 years. And this is what Ms. Anna Dodge, our Chief Financial Officer, had to say about her. Barbara is the kind of employee every organization longs for. She is dedicated, honest, meticulous, caring. I could go on and on. But most of all, she is my friend, my confidant, and although I know she deserves this wonderful step in her journey, she is someone I will miss every day. Ms. Barbara Banks. Next, we have Ms. Brenda Griffin from East Jackson High School. And she's not here, but I'm going to read um, what her... <laughs> it's not Brenda, but, but I bet you you'll accept her gift on her behalf, won't you? This is what her colleagues had to say about her. Brenda Griffin has served Jackson County Schools for 10 years, three at Jackson County High School and seven at East Jackson High School in the moderate, severe, and profound self-contained classroom. Over these years, she has worked with countless students in our special needs classes. She has loved them all like her own and shown them lots of love. Brenda chose to make this her second career and has never regretted the decision. She will be greatly missed because of her strong work ethic, loving personality, and loyalty to our students. Ms. Brenda Griffin. <laughs> Next, we'll recognize uh, East Jackson Elementary um, retirees. So if Ms. Hallie would come join us. Now you've got some help, Dr. Howard. <laughs> From East Jackson Elementary School, Ms. Cheryl Paponi, Assistant Principal. Cheryl has served our school system for 28 years. And this is what Ms. Hallie had to say about her. Ms. Paponi has served Jackson County Schools for the past 28 years, working at East Jackson Elementary for 15 years and Benton Elementary for 13 years. She really has a passion for working with students and staff to make Jackson County Schools an amazing experience. She will be remembered as expecting the best from everyone, but also pulling her own weight to get the job done. We will truly miss her enthusiasm next school year, but we wish her the best in retirement. Ms. Cheryl Paponi. Next, we have East Jackson Middle School, and uh, this retiree could not be with us, but I'm going to read um, what his staff had to say about him. Mr. Danny McFay, East Jackson Middle School, as a teacher, and he served Jackson County School System for 11 years. Danny McFay has worked for Jackson County School System for the past 10 years. He enjoys fishing, hiking, gardening, traveling, and dancing in his spare time. If you could say one thing about Danny McFay, it would be that he is devoted to his family. He is looking forward to being a full-time grandfather, Mr. Danny McFay. <laughs> Next, we have uh, from Gum Springs Elementary School, Miss Elisa Hanley, principal.
Ms. Hanley wins the award. She has served Jackson County School System for 31 years. And this is what Dr. Howard had to say about Ms. Hanley. Ms. Hanley has faithfully served the Jackson County School System for more than 31 years. Ms. Hanley's passion for learning and her commitment to excellence are evident in all she does. During her gracious tenure, she has served as an elementary school teacher, a technology specialist, an assistant principal, and opened Gum Springs Elementary School, where she has served as principal for the past 10 years, after also serving at West Jackson Primary and Intermediate as principal. Ms. Hanley is a lead learner and pours herself into her work. She has made a lasting impression on the many lives she has touched. Ms. Elisa Hanley. Next from Gum Springs Elementary School, we have Ms. Lor Dr. Lori Evans. Lori has been a teacher at Gum Springs Elementary School and has served Jackson County School System for 28 years. Dr. Lori Evans is retiring after 31 years of service in education, with 28 of those years spent teaching students in Jackson County Schools. Ms. Hanley said she has taught essentially the entire West Jackson community at some point during her career with multiple years in first, second, third, fifth, and seventh grades, and now she is teaching second generation students. She has taught at Jackson County Elementary, West Jackson Primary, West Jackson Intermediate, West Jackson Middle, and at Gum Springs Elementary. Her classroom is known as Planet Evans to all at Gum Springs Elementary, and we all enjoy her Planet Evans stories. Her humor and quick wit has kept us entertained for years, and now she entertains audiences around the country with her part-time stand-up comedy act. Dr. Evans, the teacher, the storyteller, and the grammar-checking diva will be missed at Gum Springs Elementary. Dr. Lori Evans. Next, we'll recognize several from Jackson County High School. So Dr. Jones, if you'll come join us. Our first honoree is Ms. Deborah Ash, a food service manager. And uh, I don't think Dr. Morris is here, but I was gonna invite her to come join us as well. If, Dr. Morris, if you're here, come on up. Ms. Ash has served Jackson County School System for 15 years, and this is what Dr. Morris had to say about Ms. Ash. Having Deborah Ash as a member of our school nutrition has been no less than a gift. She has been a wonderful employee, a hard worker with an impeccable work ethic. She has made a lasting impact with her smile, her integrity, and her willingness to do whatever is needed. Deborah Ash is truly a one-of-a-kind employee who will be missed but never forgotten. Ms. Deborah Ash. <laughs> Next, we have Ms. Ethel Howington, a paraprofessional at Jackson County High School. Is Ms. Howington here? I'm going to read what Dr. Jones had to say about Ms. Howington. Ms. Howington has served Jackson County High School as a paraprofessional since 2002. She works hard behind the scenes to ensure a remarkable experience for all of her students. Ms. Howington is always flexible and is more than willing to help students with whatever they need to be successful. She cares deeply about her students and her colleagues, and we will miss having her here each day. Ms. F.L. Howington. Our next honoree is Mr. Joe Lancaster, Assistant Principal at Jackson County High School. <laughs> Mr. Lancaster has served Jackson County School System for 24 years. And this is what Dr. Jones had to say about him. 
Mr. Lancaster has devoted 24 years of his career to Jackson County High School and has impacted countless students as a teacher, coach, and administrator. He taught geography, world history, American history, American government, civics, and economics. He also coached football, basketball, and golf. Later, Mr. Lancaster served the school as its athletic director and as an assistant principal. Mr. Lancaster will leave a long-lasting legacy through the relationships he built at JCHS and through the improvements that he has brought to the school during his tenure here. Mr. Joe Lancaster. And finally, from Jackson County High School, we have Ms. Connie Vaughn, paraprofessional. Is Ms. Vaughn here? I'll read what Dr. Jones had to say about her. Ms. Vaughn has served Jackson County High School as a paraprofessional since 2003 for 15 years. She is dependable and works hard each day to help the students and faculty. The special education department has often called on her to complete paperwork and fulfill other departmental duties. Ms. Vaughn always goes above and beyond to do her best. She's well liked by the students and her colleagues and we will miss having her here each day. Ms. Connie Vaughn. Our next honoree is from South Jackson Elementary School, and I don't believe Ms. Stringer could be with us tonight, but I will read what, yes, Ms. Brookshire, if you would be willing to come and accept her um, gift and present it to her, that would be great. And Ms. Stringer has served as a teacher in Jackson County School System for 25 years. She has worked at South Jackson Elementary School the entire time. She really has a passion for working with our K through two students. She works tirelessly each day to support our struggling students so they can be successful. She's extremely humble in all that she does and her kind spirit shines through in all of that. She will be missed, but we know she will enjoy the extra time she's able to spend with her grandchildren. The following quote encapsulates who she is as a person. Work hard, stay humble, smile often, stay loyal, be honest, Travel when possible, never stop learning, and love always. Ms. Teresa Stringer. <laughs> Next, we have Mr. Rusty Jackson, a bus driver in our transportation department. He could also not be with us this evening, but uh, Mr. Farmer, if you're here, if you'll come forward and accept his um, token of appreciation. Rusty Jackson has worked with the Transportation Department for over 12 years. His dedication to the Jackson County School System is reflected in ensuring the safe transport of our most precious cargo, our children. His fun-loving outlook on life and his love for students will be greatly missed. Mr. Rusty Jackson. Next, we'll honor retirees. I started to say graduates. We'll honor retirees from West Jackson Elementary School. So Dr. Hardigree, if you'll come join us. Our first is Ms. Jenny Kofer. Ms. Kofer is a teacher at West Jackson Elementary School, and she has spent 18 years serving Jackson County School System. In her 18 years of teaching second grade with the Jackson County School System, she has enjoyed building relationships with students, parents, and colleagues. She often has students from years past come to visit and tell her about the current path in life and their accomplishments. Ms. Kofer has seen many changes in this area, but the one thing that has remained constant is her love for her students and colleagues that she has had the pleasure to work with. Ms. Jenny Kofer. Our next honoree is Ms. Teresa DeBold from West Jackson Elementary School, a teacher, and she has been with us for the past three years. This is what Dr. Hardegree had to say about Ms. DeBold. In her 23 years as an educator, she is proud of the many lives she has touched and the lifelong relationships that have developed from these experiences. 
With 22 years in first grade and kindergarten, she has had the privilege of teaching nearly 500 kids how to read, the most important skill they will learn in their life. The sense of accomplishment is often overwhelming when she hears from a former student who is graduating from college with a solid career in the near future. She knows she had a small part in the joy they are experiencing. So many former students have returned to say thanks, and that is just icing on the cake. Mrs. DeBold states, my cup runneth over, for I know I have done what God called and entrusted me to do. Ms. Teresa DeBold. Our next honoree is Ms. Janice Dodd, who is not able to be with us this evening. Ms. Dodd has served Jackson County School System for 11 years and, and currently serves as a custodian at West Jackson Elementary School. This is what Dr. Hardegree had to say. One of Ms. Dodd's greatest accomplishments was getting the Clean School Award. Ms. Dodd and her team have received this honor on numerous occasions. She was nominated by her peers and received a banner eight years ago. She enjoys seeing the children that come through this school and graduate. Ms. Janice Dodd. And then last but not least, from West Jackson Middle School, we have Ms. Dorothy Dre, a teacher. Ms. Dre has served Jackson County School System for 14 years. I think Mr. Green is coming up. Sorry, Mr. Green, I should have given you just a second. Ms. Dre has been a stalwart instructor, instructor at West Jackson Middle School during her tenure. She's been a passionate and energetic teacher for all students and has brought about a strong presence of collaboration, innovation, and celebration. Her devotion to the students of WJMS and her dedication to causes such as bringing light to the issue of human trafficking has made her one of the best instructors. We will miss her tremendously at West Jackson Middle School. Ms. Dorothy Dre. And that concludes our recognition of retirees. Congratulations to all of you, and you're who I want to be when I grow up. Dr. Blankenship and, and all of our folks, thank you for preparing that. And I certainly want to say a very special um, congratulations. As you see, we're very, very fortunate in this school system to have some very invested, um, caring individuals who have made a difference in our community. So thanks to each of you. Um, you your impression will last much longer than you can even realize tonight. So thank you so much. Dr. Blankenship, I think you have one more recognition. I do. I got so excited about thinking about retirement that I, I started off to sit down, so um, it's still a long ways off for me, though. So um, I want to call back up uh, Miss uh, Dorothy Ash, who uh, Dorothy Deborah Ash. So sorry if she could come up and join me. Last year we began the um, the tradition of recognizing individuals who. Um, retire uh, from service with Jackson County School Systems and have um, unused sick leave. And Ms. Ash has quite a bit of that, or she will whenever um, she retires at the end of May. And so um, I have something to present to you symbolically. So you just wait right here and I'm gonna get it.
Thank you, Miss Ash, and we'll get you one you can cash in a few days. <laughs> so that, that is quite an achievement. All of you either at some point in your lives have worked and realized the commitment and dedication that goes into to that type of service. So thank you, Miss Ash. It is greatly appreciated, and we're glad to be able to do that. And that is an incentive program that we have available to all of our classified staff who who um, really the retirement system for those folks is not quite as robust as it, as it is for the teacher retirement system. So a little bit that we can do to show them our appreciation is just a small token of how much we value their investment and their commitment. So thank you, Miss Ash. All right, those are outstanding celebrations and people worth recognizing, and again, we are thankful. At this time, I'd like to call Mr. Will Dodd, who is going to share with you some excitement. We are very fortunate in Jackson County to have established a pretty strong robotics competition team, and so Mr. Dodd's going to tell us a little bit about the Robo Rumble. Yeah, yeah. First, I have to shake an anxiety that I'm going to blame on my dad. Like, I was watching everybody walk up here, and so my dad drummed in my head my whole life, you better save for your retirement. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that my Lincoln financial rep is going to get a call from me in the morning and just be like, just <laughs> crank it up as high as it'll go, okay? Uh, so, yeah, uh, robotics. Uh, I was asked to give a brief history on what we've had going on in Jackson County with robotics. So... I'm going to say that it started around 2014, summer of 2014, University of Georgia reached out um, and probably Deborah Riddleberger tracked them down as well, more like it. Um, and so we had a partnership, our school system with the University of Georgia, and we got a lot of teachers together, or they did, and taught us really basics of coding, um, more specifically a robotics kit called Robo Robo out of South Korea. So we all learned how to use that. Uh, fast forward a couple of years to uh, 2017, that opened up the door to my current position, which uh, is robotics and engineering teacher over at West Jackson Middle School, which is a blast, by the way. Um, we set up a district-wide competition that year, which we continued this year, um, and the, the students have more than risen to this occasion. I don't know if anybody who was there noticed, but the first year we put it on, the feeling with the students was a little frantic. Like they were kind of freaking out like, oh my gosh, we're gonna run out of time. Whereas this year, I don't know if anybody there noticed, it was far different. Those kids knew what they were doing. It was no problem to the point that I'm gonna tell you middle schoolers get ready because it's gonna be stepped up next year. You're gonna have a more difficult challenge. So um, without much more ado, I'm going to go ahead and honor those people, and I'm going to go ahead and show you a sign of the times, because uh, on the way earlier today, I was like, should I draw out a note card with these kids' names? No, it's on my phone. I'm just going to look at my phone, so sign of the times there. Um, so our elementary winners, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, elementary winners, when you come up, I guess just stand right here would be the best place to stand. Uh, coaches, if you would, please join them, because we want to honor you as well. Uh, so, elementary winners of the 2018 Robo Rumble, uh, which, by the way, was a competition where they had to program robots to move about a course, uh, which seems kind of simple, but is actually very difficult in reality. So, here are those winners. Uh, third place for elementary from Gum Springs Elementary School, Giovanni Dorsey and Toby Jarofsky. <laughs> and their coach, Amy Myers. So second place for the elementary. Oh, let me show you. What's that? Oh, OK. Mr. Jarofsky couldn't be here. Uh, second place for the elementary from West Jackson Elementary School, Liam DeWitt and Mason Harrison. <laughs> All right. And their coaches, Andrea Waldrip, and you're going to Bryant. Donna Bryant, I had it, yes. You guys are amazing, by the way, good job. Uh, first place for elementary from East Jackson Elementary School, Braden Marr and Carter Vickers. And their coach, Amy Vickers. All right, so those are our elementary winners. Now, our middle school winners, I'm going to have you guys, uh, does right here seem pretty good? 
Seems good to you. All right. So I'm going to have the middle school winners come up. I have to go ahead and tell you, we're stepping up middle school because the judges came over to me midway through the competition and they say, Will, we got a problem, man. These three teams that just finished, they're in a dead tie for, with a perfect score, which shows how well these coaches prepare them for this. Um, we actually, we went to the, uh, the first tiebreaker. They were still tied on that. Second tiebreaker, still tied on that. We had to resort to the third one, which was actually figuring out who had the most efficient code. Uh, so it came down to who had the, the fewest coding chips. And it was still even super close. So that's how that was decided. So stepping it up for next year middle school. Uh, third place for the middle school winners from East Jackson High School, Robert Brookshire and Maggie Logan. Oh, and their coach is Amy Johnson Schofield, which is amazing. She claims to be my arch nemesis, but we're really just buddies. So I don't know. It, it, we put on a good show, right? Uh, second place for middle school from East Jackson High School as well, Gates Burke and Jari Ochoa. And first place, from West Jackson Middle School, J.D. Smith and Jared Roberts. All right, congratulations to our winners. Thank you so much, guys. Very impressed with each of you. You can have a seat. Thank you, guys. Thank you again, Mr. Dodd. I know those of you that are in the audience recognize the fact that we're preparing students for an ever-changing world that we don't even know what kinds of jobs will exist when they graduate, but the work that they're doing now is truly problem solving and uh, they're doing some amazing work. So they're doing it with some amazing coaches as well and thanks to all of you. All right, at this time I'd like to call Dr. Karen Rodenroth, who works diligently to, lo to lead our Young Georgia Authors uh, competition. And we had a great competition this year, and she's going to share with you our winners as well as some special tokens for those, uh, the winners in our district. I have the honor of recognizing our district winners from the Young Georgia Authors Writing Competition. And this is a writing competition we participate in each year that encourages our students to develop an enthusiasm for writing as well as provide a context to celebrate their writing. Each school participates and submits a grade level winner. And then we have three judges who came in March, Ms. Diane Carr, Peggy Terrell, and Joy Cook, who read through the submitted writing pieces and determined a district winner for each grade level. So when I call your name, if you will come up and receive your certificate and booklet from Mr. Nicholson. We will start with kindergarten from South Jackson Elementary School, Ashlyn Kemp. And this little author wrote The Magic Pebble. From Maysville Elementary, first grade, Riley Denton wrote The Monster. In second grade, from Gum Springs Elementary, Jenna Wynn wrote The Bite That Healed Everything. And in third grade from Gum Springs, Brianna Day wrote, Welcome to the Land of the Unicorns. <laughs> and in fourth grade from North Jackson Elementary, Brianna Russell wrote the actually most positively talking dog. And in fifth grade from East Jackson Elementary, Addison Holt wrote the typewriter. And in sixth grade, East Jackson Middle, Emma Burke Halter wrote the clock.
And in seventh grade from West Jackson Middle, Aubrey Reeves wrote ours. And in eighth grade from East Jackson Comprehensive High School, Haley Dills wrote The Girl Who Set Fire to the Confederate White House. Ninth grade from Jackson County Comprehensive High School, Robert Lee Schuler wrote The Creeping Alluvium. In 10th grade from Jackson County High School, Cheris Kitchens wrote Blue Curtains. <laughs> 11th grade from Jackson County Comprehensive, Morgan Wickline wrote Misty. And in 12th grade from East Jackson Comprehensive, Nicole Dyer wrote The Hoodie Girl. And on behalf of the Jackson County School System, we are so proud of you. One more round of applause for these authors. And at this time, I would like to call Gail Elrod up here for an additional YGA accomplishment. I'm Gail Elrod from Northeast Georgia, RESA. And once uh, the participants are um, finalized here at the system level, then the entries are submitted to the RESA, and we have four judges to read through each entry, and one of the district winner is from Maysville. So, at this time, I'd like to recognize Riley Denton for her uh, story on the monster as the regional winner. So, Riley, if you'll come up. Congratulations. Way to go, Miss Riley. Super proud of you, baby doll. And if Jen Sane will come on up for one more special recognition. I'm Jennifer Sane. I'm the media specialist at Jackson County Comprehensive High School. And I am so impressed by our students. These writings were amazing. And I had the honor and the privilege of getting to read them all. I feel like I know all of you because I have an important special student in my life too. Her name is Madison Smith. Madison, come on up. And Madison's really important to this process because Madison, you notice each one of our award recipients received a keepsake, a keepsake book. And Madison is the creator and editor of that keepsake book. So we hope that you enjoy that memento. Uh, Madison learned quite a lot through the process. Madison is placed with me in the Media Center as a work-based learning intern. And she goes through a day in the life of the media specialist with me twice a day, two periods with me. So she spent the last two months of her life preparing those brag books, as we call them for you guys. She learned how to compose professional emails. She had to com 
to correspond with district leaders. She had to lead and facilitate Google Hangout meetings on air. She did surveys to get your feedback as the winners of things you like to do, and she turned those into biographies for you and put them in your book. She had to correspond with media specialists across the district, and she had to be the graphic design artist to create your books and put them together. So she had quite a big hand in playing um, in the Young Georgia Author Awards competition. So Madison, I want us to recognize you and thank you for your hard work. I'm trying not to cry because Madison's a senior and leaving me soon. Thank you again. I did get to see Madison work very hard. She took great care in making sure those were individualized. But most importantly, we are very proud of these young writers and just hope that you'll continue to pour into your passion. And congratulations. We're very proud of you. This time, I'd like to call Mr. Todd Nicholson to announce uh, some Governor's Honors winners at the state level. This is a great recognition, and he will share with you a little bit more about recipients of the Georgia Governor's Honors Program. Absolutely. So a few years ago, we played with the... Uh, uh, a slogan for Jackson County, choose success at JCSS. And if this evening is not an indicator of just how many successes we have, I mean, this is just a tip of the iceberg, but it is, is truly humbling to be amongst uh, folks that are half your age and like 15 times more impressive. Um, so accolades go out to, to all of our students. Governor's Honors does, does require just a brief explanation, and those of you that, that are not aware of it, there are 3,000 students throughout the, the uh, state that participate in this. At, at the school level, and around 1,500 students then, their, their applications are submitted to the state. And then as a school system, Jackson County was only allowed to send 10 folks. What we're looking for, not we, what, what the Governor's Honors looks for is, is students that are showing a way beyond high school level skills. These are folks that, that are already showing collegiate and beyond collegiate level performance. It, it's the whole range of academic fine arts. And so out of our 10 that we sent, we had five that were selected to go to the state and you have auditions, you have performances. If you're an artist, you have your art that's up there and they, they ask all sorts of questions. If it's a content, it's almost like you're, you're defending a dissertation. And when it all came down to it, we had out of those five that went to the state competition, we had three Jackson County students. I believe our representative from East Jackson Comprehensive High School is not here this evening, but if she is, please do come up. But, but in science, East Jackson Comprehensive High School, we had Julia Doan, is she here this evening. I, I didn't think she was going to be here, so uh, Ms. Palmer, do you mind coming up and accepting this on her behalf? She, she, as well as the other recipient that I'll mention in just a minute, will get to go to uh, essentially pre-college during the course of the summer. They go to college, they, they stay in the dorms, they get the full experience. Congratulations. Uh, and, and they get us, they, they, they get to be around like, like-minded peers and they get a taste of what it's going to be like to be in college. And the folks that have gone through Governor's Honors will tell you that this is really a life-changing event. So even though she's not here, let's give Julie a round of applause. So Jackson County Comprehensive High School had two folks and, and I'm going to announce the alternate first and the alternate there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It is like critically impressive um, and, and so talking to um, a, a mother earlier said well actually the alternate gets, um, they, they get the benefit of getting honored this year and likely the honor of next year so it's two things on the resume. So, um, so I, I liked that comment so I, I owe you for, for that uh, but I appreciate it but let's give a round of, a, of applause for Savannah Van Buren from Jackson County Comprehensive High School. French horn. Now what Savannah doesn't know is I have a French horn right here. <laughs> Another round of applause for Savannah. So she had to play in front of people she didn't know. And if you're a musician or an artist of any form or fashion, that, that, that's a challenge. And then to play incredibly well in front of people who don't know, and then have them grill you about what you just played, that's, that's quite nerve-wracking. 
The, the last person uh, that I'd like to recognize this evening is Jackson County Comprehensive High School's finalist in percussion, which I think is really awesome because I'm also a percussionist. But uh, the fact that uh, this gentleman is, is going to, to go off to um, the summer and, and have just an, a really rich, robust experience is um, it's, it's going to be a, a life-changing experience, as I mentioned. So let's give a round of applause for Noah Averett. Truly remarkable students. Thank you for giving me a few minutes to recognize them. Congratulations, quite an achievement, and boy, we can't wait to hear about your experience this summer. Next, I'd like to ask Mr. Wade Johnson, who is our representative from Jackson EMC, and as he's coming to, this, to the podium to tell you a little bit, I always like to take an opportunity to thank Jackson EMC. You hear from them a lot at our board meetings. They are constant supporters of our community and of our school system, and so Mr. Johnson is here to share yet another recognition that he has. Thank you so much, Dr. Howard. It's a pleasure for me to be here again. My name is Wade Johnson. I am the commercial and industrial marketing representative uh, out of the Jefferson District in Jackson EMC, would like to recognize Andy Elliott. Uh, I'm told, there she is. I didn't see her when I walked in. <clears throat> Andy is one of four students selected for an all expense paid leadership and team building experience to Washington, D.C. next month. Here's your play. Uh, she will join uh, almost 1,800 other delegates for the Washington Youth Tour sponsored by the EMCs across the country. Uh, just a little bit about the um, competition process. There was 45 high school, uh, high school guidance counselors and leadership educators in our service area selecting one student from each school to compete for the one of four positions. Uh, competing sophomores and juniors were nominated to represent their high school and then selected based on academic performance, school and community involvement, essays, letters of recommendation, a personal interview conducted at our corporate offices in Jefferson, and Chip Jenkins, our president and CEO, said our delegates truly represent the values of Jackson EMC with their commitment to community service, high standard of integrity, and spirit of cooperation. So congratulations. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, compliment Jackson County Schools and their accomplishments in the, the Jackson EMC Beef Show uh, earlier this year. Every year since 1969, Jackson EMC has sponsored the Quality Beef Show to honor the contribution the agriculture industry makes to Northeast Georgia's economy, uh, representing FFA, 4-H clubs from Banks, Barrow, Franklin, Hall, Madison, and Jackson counties. 47 students competed and entered 91 cattle in the competition held at the Livestock Center in Jefferson. Jackson County Schools were represented extremely well, uh, winning 10 of the 20 classifications, including overall and reserve supreme champions. So um, kudos to Jackson County Schools, and uh, thank you for all you guys do for the community. It's a pleasure to be a, a corporate and um, community partnership, have that partnership with you guys. Well, we're certainly thankful for what you do with us as far as the representative for Jackson EMC. They have been a long-standing partner with the school systems and they will continue to do so. We know that without a shadow of a doubt, but without any, you know, any reservations, we thank you for what, what you guys do for us because you really, really are a true good partner for the school systems and an advocate for us. Thanks so much. We thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I really probably shouldn't say this, but I just as Wade's leaving by, I just want you to know the, another beauty of Jackson EMC, while it is a large company, a large EMC that we, many of us co-op with, uh, we also have the benefit of being truly being vested. When the power goes out, Wade is on the phone within five minutes. And so those of you who are parents and folks that are really vested, we have lots of support from a global perspective, but we have instant service from them and they care about our community. So thank you for everything you do. We really appreciate you. <clears throat> All right, next I'd like to call Mr. Todd Nicholson. Excuse me, this is going to be Todd Schultz. Todd Schultz is going to, yeah, we've got lots of good Todds, right? <laughs> Todd Schultz, who is our CTAE director, and he's going to share with us a very, very exciting state award winner. Yes, I'm really excited to, to introduce a young man uh, who, it's taken him three years to do this, um, and it's quite a feat in itself. Uh, if you don't know, in FFA, there's 41,000 FFA members in the state of Georgia. We're the third largest state in the United States. And um, this young man, Mr. Nate McKinney, come on up. 
Nate is the son, he's a freshman, finishing up his freshman year this year. He's the son of John and Sarah McKinney. Um, but Nate, what he did was he did the FFA Creed. Um, and I, I want to say thank you to Mr. Gilman also, and also um, Kate Wilson, who worked with Nate diligently. I, I swear every time you saw this young man, he was practicing. But um, when Nate did the Creed, the Creed is a five-paragraph, about 2,500-word, really, essay. It's really what the FFA is all about. And um, you think it's a, a hard fact in itself, but getting up and saying it, one of the things that he did, too, as soon as he was awarded state winner at the FFA state convention, at that moment, he had to give the creed in front of 6,800 people. Um, so, I mean, you're talking about, I mean, public speaking is one of those things most people fear even more than death. So when you see a young man at his caliber, at his age, you see lots of potential as he goes down the road. So I congratulate him completely. He is going to be going on to um, the National FFA Convention in October and representing Georgia and East Jackson here and, and our whole Jackson County very well. So we're really proud of him and I'd like to give him a round of applause. Congratulations, Nate, and I know that I saw Sarah. I don't know if the rest of the family's here. Thank you for sharing um, a, a precious gift. Nate has worked very hard, and we are so proud of that achievement. We'll be cheering for you from a, at the state at, at the national convention at the national competition. I believe that we're going to have to we're going to have to delay um, the student, Mr. Sam Holsey, who we were going to recognize as the Rotary student, was actually not able to attend last month and was planning to attend this month. But he has a big AP exam tomorrow, and he said if he could get a couple more hours of studying in, he thought he could get a five on that thing. So we support that effort. And so um, Mr. Mueller is not here either, but Mr. Mueller has been recognized as the Rotary teacher, and that selection was made by Sam. So congratulations to Sam and to Mr. Mueller. Um, outstanding student and outstanding teacher here at East Jackson High School and we'll make sure that they are appropriately recognized. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I'd like to ask Dr. Blankenship to return to the podium. Uh, this year, uh, actually last year, we instituted an Excellence in Service Award and we have a, a recipient here this evening. Dr. Blankenship? We do and it's appropriate that we are here at East Jackson High School because the recipient this evening is from East Jackson High School. So I'd like to ask Julie Crouch to come forward and uh, I have a few words to say from her nominator, Ms. Cindy Lacey. There are many attributes I believe Julie possesses as a JCSS excellent employee. First, humility. She came into the position as a guidance counselor two years ago and tackled the many duties and extraordinary responsibilities with the wisdom of someone who did not take for granted what a tremendous responsibility this role entails. She approached this new position with professional humbleness and, looked, and took the time to learn what was needed to be an amazing counselor. Second, wisdom. Julie has shown incredible wisdom as our counselor. Our students and staff truly rely on her wisdom on a daily basis. She has worked very hard to become well-versed in her position and has been a great resource for us all. Third, work ethic. She has such a positive spirit and always willing to step in and help with anything needed of her. For me, this asset is so valuable. She sees a need and meets the need with such a great spirit. She definitely contributes to a positive work environment. She literally is one of the hardest working people I know and never expects any recognition for her efforts. She is completely invested in our community and donates her time and money to help our kids and their families. As a woman of faith, she lives it out in her daily walk. There are probably many things she does behind the scenes that we don't even know about. She is one of a kind, Ms. Julie Crouch. Congratulations, Ms. Crouch. Those are very humbling and deserving words, but we appreciate everything you do for East Jackson, and you're a model for all of Jackson County Schools, so thank you so much. And that concludes our recognitions this evening. We want to thank those of you who are still still here with us. Um, there were many recognitions, but these folks deserve our time and our, and our accolades, so thank you again, and I'll turn it back over to you, um, Mr. Bryant. 
Don't know which way to go. Yeah. <laughs> we certainly don't mind staying as far as for the accolades for our students because that's what it's all about. As far as we would definitely want to make recommendations with those and, and, and a pat on the back because, you know, a pat on the back goes a long way. And um, Julie, I know that uh, with your recognition just there, it, um, a counselor can be one of those thankless jobs to the point to where uh, trying to help a child decide the direction of their course, what they're going to do. And I know that my guidance counselor in high school, I can remember her name, Miss Cleary, just as soon as I look at her, because she decided that, that I needed to go to a different college that I wanted to go to. So she helped me understand that. So the role that you do as a counselor is certainly thankful. We really appreciate it and what you do. We'll use in the consent agenda with the items one through five that we have on the, the page. Do you have any discussions or questions about those that is written? I have a motion that we accept. A second. All in favor? Aye. That concludes what we have tonight. Do I have a motion that we have for adjournment? And a second. All in favor? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming.